Hello and welcome to my channel. So currently I have NGC 2392, also known as the Eskimo Nebula in the constellation Gemini. I have that in the eyepiece and let's have a quick look at the telescope and then I'm going to run you through where it is in the sky and where to aim your telescope. Then I'm going to show you the sketch and then I'll show you the final drawing. So stay tuned for that. So there's Gemini way up there and here's my telescope. All set up, pointing upwards towards Gemini, the Eskimo Nebula. And I'm going to be using my 8 to 24 millimeter eyepiece for this. Probably going to do my sketch at uh, 8 millimeters because it's a small planetary nebula. So we'll get in there and check that out. Here we are in Stellarium and centered on NGC 2392, also known as the Eskimo Nebula or the Clown Face Nebula in the constellation of Gemini. This planetary nebula can be found near the double star Wasat. The apparent magnitude of the Eskimo Nebula is around 10. This object requires a telescope and while a small telescope will be able to see it, it is best viewed with a larger telescope. The Eskimo Nebula is around 2,870 light years from Earth and started forming around 10,000 years ago, forming two elliptical lobes that were ejected from the dying star during its red giant phase. This star is expected to turn into a white dwarf when all is said and done. The bubbles or shells forming the nebula around the dying star are not smooth but have filaments of dense matter. All right, now that we're done with the technical information, let's get on to having a look at it through the eyepiece. Even magnified at such a high power, this nebula was still quite bright with discernible difference between the inner and outer bubbles of the nebula. There appears to be a dark ring that separate the brighter inner shell from the outer dimmer shell. There weren't too many stars within the field of view, but most of them were relatively dim, especially in comparison to the nebula itself. The stars were plotted using an HB pencil, while the nebula was sketched using a 4B and a 6B pencil for the two different bubbles. Each section was then smoothed out a bit with a blending stump, and once I got inside under better lighting I used a kneaded eraser to lift up some of the graphite to show off the dark band separating the inner and outer parts of the nebula. Now that we've seen the sketch, let's have a look at the final drawing. After snapping a picture with my phone and importing into GIMP, I inverted the image, adjusted the brightness a bit, created the eyepiece view, and added labels to the final image. I really love planetary nebula as a lot of them are quite bright in the eyepiece and are very interesting to me. Most of them are pretty small so they require more magnification. As typical with magnification, it reduces how bright an object is and will also block out some of the light pollution in the sky. The best part about Planetary Nebula is the magnification doesn't seem to affect the overall brightness of it as much as, say, magnifying a dim galaxy does. Well, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to like and subscribe, and be sure to hit the bell notification to be notified when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.